G'day everyone, welcome back to Planet Coaster 2. I hope you're doing really well. Uh, well, it's that time of the year and uh, it's getting towards the end of December and I'm looking forward to celebrating and having some time off and been creating some little scenery items which I've shared on the workshop actually so you can download and put these in your park if you so wish. Uh, and I thought it'd be nice to just talk a little bit about how I went about modeling and creating uh, some of these little characters. So I'm going to focus on the big Ted there in the middle today and just show you some of the thinking and I guess how you can take simple shapes and create something quite compelling, I think. Um, and it may be daunting and it, you may have tried it before, but I think with some just general guidelines, you might be able to actually improve your own models too. So I've got a background in 3D modeling many moons ago, um, but I found it, yeah, you can still apply some basic principles to get a, a really nice 3D shape. So let's get stuck in and uh, yeah, hope you enjoy it. Okay, so here's Big Ted and he is um, nicely stuffed. And I think that's to our advantage here is that we can overlap these basic scenery shapes, the spheres and the half eggs, the M&M type shapes, to create, um, I guess, pillows of fabric that overlap and create these sort of seam lines. And that's probably the real challenge here is to find the right placement for those. So if I deconstruct poor Ted here, I'll just undo what we did to show you the various shapes. You can see it's mostly spheres and egg shapes, half egg shapes and we're just stitching those together in one sort of mesh. So the challenge is when you're placing shapes like that together is making it feel like they belong together and that's combining them in the right way. If you just slap together you know, a sphere with a sphere and don't consider the overlap, it's gonna really look quite ugly. And I think that's probably the hardest part is getting the placement correct. So yeah, we'll go into a speed build and I'll talk us through it. When you look back at the footage, it's always odd because there's so many stages where your character looks bad. <laughs> and uh, that's okay because I think it's a really good lesson in this in that if you push through, you can get past some of these stages to get something that looks quite good. So here's the first tip. I focus on one plane at a time. Get your proportions correct. So where does the eyes, the ears, the mouth need to sit proportional to the head? Where does the head need to sit proportional to the body? Um, and front on that's going to look fine but then from the side it's going to look a bit like a squash pancake and uh, that's part of the process so it's yeah getting those right before you move to the second plane which is the uh, back to front and that's when you can add all the depth and by here you can see I'm bulking out uh, the teddy and giving him a real chubbiness and again he looks a bit like Michelin man with all the bubbles and blobs but we're not too worried right now about how that looks uh, we're gonna spend a lot of time finessing the seams later so it's all about layout and um, structure and so yeah if I can encourage you to not give up at this point because it can be quite frustrating um, when the shapes don't quite work um, just getting the proportions correct is gonna help you lay it out much much better once you're happy with that, you can then play with things like offsetting the symmetry. So I grab the whole head and the shoulders here and just rotate it to the side, giving him some weight onto his left. And that really helps, yeah, give him the positioning and structure that we need. Once those basic structures are in place, that's when you can add your detail. And I think it goes a lot easier because you're working with the flow of what you've already created. So in the case of the Christmas hat, it's already leaning to the left so I just created the hat to flow down with that side and it just seems to work um, you're not having to fight your design by adding details and the bulk of the shape at once so try to separate details from the fundamental structure of your character and it will go a lot lot easier and then it's about fine-tuning so yeah sorry this footage is so fast um, but you get the idea where I saw I needed to create a definition in the mouth area and I wanted to play with the paw placement just to really give a leaning and accentuate the weight again. And so it's quite surprising. You've got basic egg shapes, so those sort of M&M &M type shape pieces. And when you push them together at just the right angle, you can get this sort of overlapping fold, which makes it feels like there's some flesh to it, like there's a, a fabric seam that overlaps. So yeah, it worked quite well in the end. 
just finishing up as well with the details figuring out okay well the eye placement might look a bit more appealing further apart you know uh, some of those things you may not think about initially until you get the bulk of the structure in but again if i can say anything working in the two planes uh, really helps you get that initial sort of layout and then it's about yeah rethinking relooking at it and sometimes it helps just to walk away uh, and reload the file and come back to it because you just get a different perspective when your head's in the game for like a couple of hours on a model um, you can get a little bit lost and think gosh what am i doing wrong um, but you walk away come back and wow suddenly it looks good again or you can see what the problem is straight away um, yeah and then adding the little details like the bollards for the eyes just really polished it off gave it that much more appealing look and feel than those other pieces that I was using and uh, yeah understanding the challenges of what your shapes can do and what scale you should be applying um, it just comes with practice I'm still figuring a lot of that out but yeah in the end we got there so yeah little sleeves just to tie it off and here he is all done there we go aren't they cute I think uh, yeah I was really happy with how you turned out to be honest um, and the nice thing about the game is you can replicate and duplicate your pieces and make very quick variations. So dropping the bow, a couple of buttons, pulling the hat off, changing the uh, fur color. And we've got another little guy and just, you know, you can come in and grab components of your model uh, and rotate to, you know, yeah, create more variations too. Maybe you can add it to an animation piece and get it swinging its head around or whatever you want to do. So, very cool. Um, and yeah, once you do that, maybe it's, yeah, you can take your basic shape and create other animals too. Like maybe a rabbit or something, you can do a longer ear, but you've got your bulk done. Um, and you find that the more you do this, the easier it gets. So, hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know in the comments if this is the type of content you like or not. That's fine. Um, really keen to try different tips and tricks through Planet Coaster as we progress. It's been over a month now the game's out and uh, still loving it. Hopefully you are too. Take care everyone. Bye. <laughs>